This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. So one little tip that helps, if you've got persistent scratches right up by the plunge line, I actually like to switch to a round bar for that. Ideally one that fits inside your size of plunge line. What a round bar does is you've got a much smaller contact point, so you can put a lot higher pressure down and just really bear down on the deep scratches. And then make sure you switch back to a flat plate to go over the top of them to actually make the surface flat. But sometimes it's nice to not be sat there for 20 minutes over one scratch. Just hog it out with a little stick and then switch back to a flat. And then the other tip that, fit, that really helps with sanding is Rhino Wet. Get some red line. There's a reason why everyone in the industry says this isn't the stuff. I've tried all the other high quality papers and this is literally twice as fast as the next best one. I actually shed a tear the first time I used this, thinking of all the wasted work. I think it takes me about an eighth of the amount of time as it took me from the, the paper I was using before I got this stuff. I, I cannot recommend it highly enough. The next step on this, just grind this bit of the tip off. So this bit has been here the whole time so that I've got something flat to sand off of and so that there's a heat sink while I'm grinding. So I've put on 120 grit belt and I'm just gonna take this bit of extra material off the tip, I've drawn where I want, just make it a little bit more of an elegant shape. I'm gonna do this dry, but I'm gonna do it very slowly, as in low pressure, checking very often, and I basically dip the, dip the knife into this water at all times, and you see this little drip there? As soon as that drip's either gone or evaporated, I'm dipping it again. I'm not letting it get dry at any point. I'm now going to switch to a 220 grit and just round over the spine as well, all the way down to the tip. If the spine is rounded right at the tip, it makes the very tip itself just a tiny bit thinner, which means it'll penetrate through, through food a little bit better. So there we go, that's rounded off the spine all the way down to the tip. I already rounded off the choil, forgot to get that one on camera unfortunately, and polished that up. So now I'll just jump over to a blue scotch bright belt to put a little bit of a smooth polish on this. So the last step before starting to fit the handle on will be to clean this off with some solvent and very quickly dip it in the acid to bring out the contrast between the core and the cladding. So when I clean a knife for etching, I like to start with a little bit of dish soap, one drip per side, Ooh, that'll be enough for the whole knife. Fairly clean hands, coat the whole thing. Rinse the whole thing off. Don't worry about touching it with your fingers at this point. I'm gonna make sure to get all the soap off. Wave as much of the drips off as possible. Isopropyl alcohol, you can use acetone if you like, just something that cleans quite clean. Um, isopropyl goes to absolutely nothing. And then I'm gonna rinse it under just clean water again to get any little bits of lint or dust from the cloth off. And that's now ready to etch. So we're just going in the etch tank here, and that'll be, I'm just gonna hold it because I do a very short etch on my stainless sand mai. So I'll just count to 10 and then check. And that, if I've got any fingerprints or, on it or anything, I, they'll show up straight away. So no fingerprints, nice contrast. I'm gonna give it another 10 seconds. I like roughly 20 to 25 seconds in, this is four to one ferric chloride, to uh, water to ferric chloride. That'll do. And then I'm gonna rinse it off in some water, get all of the acid off it. 
just look at that lovely contrast. One thing I really love about stainless sand mai is all of this, this wavy, cloudy stuff. So this is the carbon migration I was talking about right at the start of this process. Where the dark core is whiter, that's where it's lost a bit of carbon. And where the shiny cladding is darker right by the edge, that's where it's gained a bit of carbon. So the dark bit here has basically robbed the carbon out of the, the lighter part. And ideally, you don't really want any of this light stuff coming down and touching the edge. So I'm gonna go put some bicarb of soda on this blade really quickly. If you etch a knife and then wash it off and leave it, it'll seem fine for 10 minutes and then it'll start to go rusty. So you wanna basically put some base or some alkali on the blade to neutralize any remaining acid. And that could be just sitting inside the microscopic scratches. So it, it might look like you've cleaned it off, but there's still a bit left. So yeah, just a little mixture of water and bicarb and make sure to rub it in really thoroughly all over. When I rub near the edge, I'm always going outwards and then relieve pressure just to avoid cutting myself. Make sure to get the tip and the spine because there's some carbon steel showing on the spine and the choil. And I'll also do the tang because we wouldn't want the tang going rusty. And that's basically done. As long as you've rubbed it in all over, you can then just rinse it off with some cold water. And then again, get as many drips off the blade as you can. And I'm gonna oil it straight away. So I take a heat gun and I'm gonna dry the blade with the heat gun. So there's still no fingerprints ideally on the blade, not touched it at all. Actually, there's still some bicarb, it needs a bit more of a rinse. And then I like Carnuba wax. It's uh, food safe and it gives a nice durable finish. If the knife's gonna be sat for a while, especially if it's um, more of a statement piece or an art knife, I'll use Ren wax, Renaissance wax, but that's not food safe. So I won't use that for kitchen knives. That's mostly for folders, especially mosaics, stuff like that stuff that you want to keep looking clean for ages. And if if I've got, a, say, a mosaic chef's knife going out, I would prefer that it's used, but I'll ask the client whether they're going to put it in a case. And if it's going in a case, I'll, I'll put Renaissance wax on it because it is a much more durable finish. So roughly dried on a clean T-shirt. If your T-shirt's dirty, don't do that because you'll have bits of grit in it. Then I'm going to use a heat gun to get the last re remnants of water out. If it's still slightly damp when you wax it, you're just trapping the water under the wax and essentially that's even worse than not waxing it because the water's you know trapped in there. I mean I guess it might not be worse actually because you need oxygen to rust as well as water so if you've got the waxing perfect you might be able to avoid rust but just get the blade dry first. Okay so that's dry and also warmed up which is going to help the wax to stick. So I'll just rub the wax all over Remember to get the spine and choil, and then I'm gonna take a clean cloth and remove all of the excess wax. Make sure to do it before it dries, otherwise it does not come off. Uh, at least with it. read the instructions for your specific wax. Again, make sure the bit of cloth you're using is clean. Don't want bits of grit in your cloth. And if you're gonna do this, again, make sure your fingers are always traveling away from the edge of the blade. So my hand is always moving up in relation to the blade never down, otherwise you might end up cutting into your finger.